Hey, what? Hi, hey, hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you are doing well. And it's time for an interview. My guest in this live interview on Twitch, check out our Twitch page linked down below, is Hunter Hunt Hendricks, a composer, songwriter, vocalist of the project Liturgy. Uh, her recent record under that band uh, Hawk is one of my favorite metal records of last year. Uh, made it pretty high onto my 2010s decade list as well, uh, if I believe that uh, correctly. It was either that or Aesthetica. It was one of those two, but I believe I ended up going with uh, with that one. And um, uh, hmm. and because, uh, you know, that has uh, been one of my favorite records uh, in a while, um, I have just been excited to get this conversation going, ask Hunter as many questions as possible about that album, her creative process, and uh, anything else that we land on in the midst of this conversation. Uh, hey, how you doing? Doing great. Just kind of just kind of chilling. First question I wanted to throw at you just in relation to the new record. It's been out for a little while. Um, I know that records that liturgy has put out in the past haven't necessarily gotten the warmest of receptions but um at, at least from my perspective personally uh it, it seems like the uh takes that i've seen generally going across the internet with this new lp have been relatively positive i mean has that been mostly your experience as well do you feel like um maybe the tides are turning a little bit with this new lp that the you know there's been more positivity in response to this one yeah, for sure. I mean, certainly in terms of what I have experienced, um, I don't know how siloed the world is. Like maybe there's a lot of haters that I don't uh, get to contact or whatever. But yeah, I mean, ever, ever since we put out the God of Love last year, the, the tone on the internet just really changed. Um, and like, I think like before then it was sort of, I, don't know. I mean, almost like remarkably, like uniquely uh, controversial or whatever, like for like three albums mm. <laughs> or whatever, like, like, like a decade. And uh, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's been super cool to sort of uh, like interact with people who are really appreciative of the music. And uh, I don't know, I've, I've kind of like met a lot of inspiring people on the Internet almost because of that. I think like we like we chose to release the album kind of like outside the music industry, which I which I almost feel like helped because they're like it just sort of went out, you know, and there wasn't as much like mediation by journalists. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been really wonderful. I, what what exactly do you think is kind of gone into either kind of the recipe or the sauce of the music that created that I guess reception or do you think it's mostly kind of a context based thing because I, I know if, if we're kind of comparing to like let's say 2011 for example I, I feel like there were a lot of people who were kind of bogged down in the context of like American black metal being sort of not necessarily accepted in the wider scene because it's breaking with tradition on top of the perceptions of the band based around you and the manifesto about transcendental black metal and so on and so forth. I mean, do you think it's kind of a matter of the sound winning over people who were skeptical before? Or do you think maybe it's a new batch of listeners going into it with less expectations and less biases because maybe there's, you know, little or context and they're just kind of taking the music at face value. Yeah. I don't really know. I mean, like, like I've thought about it. I, you know, you can imagine that maybe on the one hand, like when, like the most like, generous way to think of it would be like when, like when music is really original or something, hmm. You, maybe you expect people to not appreciate it at first and then and then like people start liking it more later or something and that, and that's certainly like that like not everyone is interested in trying to do that even but like that's definitely sort of the vibe of the music like we're sort of like combining these styles and thinking you know this is like strange and new and, and different you know so so it was never like a huge surprise um that like some people were not accepting um but but there was 
a um yeah, I don't know. But it was pretty bad at the same time. I mean, I mean, I think also, yeah, there's, you know, there were more rigid distinctions between genres at the time. I think it was also a kind of like anti-intellectual time in like underground culture in a way, like, like maybe because of something that was happening with the internet at the time. But like, I just like, like now it's not so common, you know, to like find someone on Twitter who is into like, critical theory and occultism and extreme music and religion and like um but like that's just not how it was then it was like people were just like really kind of baffled um and like angry and i don't know quite why that's changed um but yeah i don't know yeah, I mean, I, I guess in online spaces like Twitter, there wasn't exactly kind of like a, a forum for for those types of scenes of people previously, like much, much earlier on in the decade, I suppose. But uh, to, to move on past that a little bit into the sonics of the album that you mentioned, I mean, uh, me personally, I mean, comparing it to the rest of the discography, I mean, if, if we're not maybe if we're not taking into account the arc work because i mean that that album sonically and compositionally is a pretty um ambitious undertaking i i know that maybe in the past people haven't necessarily like perceived liturgy as as having sort of like this gargantuan panoramic kind of instrumental presentation but it certainly seems like that's what the project is starting to seep into a little bit more i mean especially with this latest single that you put out leia um you know with i mean especially the presentation of the harps on that track i mean would you say going forward like stepping even further into kind of the classical realm might be where liturgy and kind of the sound of everything is headed next oh i mean i mean we actually have yeah so so that yeah the track antigone that we just put out like two months ago yeah yeah, is, yeah sorry the, uh, the, yeah the uh title slipped my mind i said yeah 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 yeah, it was there um uh yeah i mean i actually we have a studio recording of like an entire uh album just like an opera that is uh way more in the classical direction you know Mm -hmm. it, it, it has like um like full chamber arrangements the whole time and there there are like entire stretches of it that uh that don't even have metal instrumentation in it um and it's actually like how how i began working with uh uh tia and leo the the current drummer and bass player was i sort of brought them on board for that because they could read music and um and because it's like super through composed you know so you can't really expect somebody to like memorize a piece like that um and then and then we just yeah and then the vibe was just kind of really good with them or whatever but like um i do kind of see the band kind of going that direction but but also at the same time we kind of like finished that record and um made like a film and i'm just not really happy with the film yet Mm -hmm. um so we haven't done anything with it but at the same time we're working on another record that's like uh very far along with that's like pretty much the same sound as uh hawk so uh like I'm very interested in kind of being in, yeah. I, I, I guess kind of like playing playing the rock music style world or something, and also even like kind of interfacing with like performing arts institutions and like making classical music, because um, it really is like a like it's like a composerly project in a way. Um, like I, you know, um, like almost like could have been a composer or something, you know, and, and, and like definitely considered that, that route, you know, making like Ben Bronca meets uh, Steve Ray compositions or whatever, but just kind of got, got into the black middle thing uh, instead, I guess. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, kind of going off of that, uh, the next series of questions that I wanted to ask you is maybe obvious, maybe painfully obvious, but I feel like it's kind of, almost worth asking going into a little bit because I I feel like there's so much, so many misconceptions about you and the kind of music that you're making and the attentions behind it artistically Um, for whatever reason, through misinformation via the opinions by journalists or haters on the internet or whatever, misreading Mm -hmm. of the things that you've written. Um, 
and again, you know, obviously you've labeled this, uh, a lot of the music you've made is transcendental black metal. You know, you said you've gotten into the black metal stuff, that sort of thing. But I mean, w- would you say creatively, would you define yourself in any capacity as, as a metal musician? And then personally, do you feel reverence for metal as an institution, a culture, a style that has sort of a history of artists that sort of came before you and everyone else making metal music today? Yeah, those are good questions. Um, Like in terms of the cultural context where I sort of came up, you know, in like high school and college, I certainly wasn't in a metal scene. You know, like I was, it was very much just kind of like New York sort of post-minimalism, post-no wave, like, you know, kind of seeing like Bronca and Swans and like um, Teenage Jesus and something as like kind of the like four parents of like the kind of like DIY scene and then I was like studying composition and and like I uh and then so but it, it was kind of like I was in these different scenes but none of, none of them were metal but I just think that I like when I discovered black metal like I just became like so obsessed with it for like emotional reasons you know like like it and, and that's something that I have been thinking about, like, more recently, I guess. I mean, like, I was, like, very, like, not okay, <laughs> I guess, right? Like, like as, as, like, a high school kid. And, like, there was something about the, the sense of, um, you know, like, infinite desolation or something in, like, a Zastor album or, like, a mutilation album that, like, really, really, like, spoke to me. Um, and like it was also, I think, but also like you know, it's like black metal kind of has this way where like all the rainbows, all the colors of the rainbow kind of like collapse into like white light, and it's just this like flood or something, and it's actually there's just like ecstasy in it, I guess, and like I kind of wanted a sort of medium to like convey a certain tenderness that I wasn't totally comfortable with or something. And like, I mean, I don't know. I like, like, I, yeah, I mean, I, I was a deep, I was, you know, it wasn't like a joke or something, you know, I was like a very deep, yeah. deeply passionate, like black metal fan. And then, um, oh. kind of upon, and like, I kind of wanted to like carry the genre with me as I began trying to like heal or something, you know? Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll stop you right there and say that I, I feel like that's exactly the kind of thing that, I mean, I feel like innately, if you're paying attention to the, the music that speaks out, but if, if you're somebody who's going into it deaf and angry and sort of ignorant, I, I think there are a lot of people who are sort of on the surface level see like, I don't know what you could maybe categorize as criticisms of the genre or wishes that you've been very sort of outspoken about in your own work to sort of, you know, create this kind of black metal metamorphosis as, as being like hatred or disrespect of the genre, which I don't get, I don't think comes across at all, but I think there are a lot of people who sort of are detractors, you know, toward what you do, who sort of see what you're doing is almost like disrespect in a way when I think it comes from a place of, of, of fandom in a way, you know, and, and I, I think that you obviously put a lot of thought into what you do. Um, and, and I think if you didn't care about it, you wouldn't put so much thought in it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, yeah, I definitely have, I mean, I see black metal as, Part of what was meaningful to me about black metal was that um, it was like a form of music that like during the 90s, just like totally, totally rejected the kind of like commodified counterculture industry or whatever. Mm. And like and like that was like a very, I think, traumatic moment for underground music when like kind of like Kurt Cobain and like, 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 like there was just like things were really changing. And like there was there's this extremity to black metal that means a lot to me um and and of course metal in general i mean i'm a big metal fan like i guess i would say two things like one is that i sort of because i have this whole philosophical approach you know i sort of situate metal in like a theory of history you know and so it's like you have like 
I don't know, like the Enlightenment, you know, and then like, you know, industrial capitalism, and then, uh, you know, the the birth of the counterculture as like a sort of uh, blossoming forth of something in rejection of that. And then that sort of reaching this point of extremity where like, it needs to like, implode into something new. And that was, and, and that was, I don't know, I thought that was a cool idea or something. Um, I mean, but I will say, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm a trans woman, you know, so, so like, like there are, there are aspects of the core, like founding gestures of black metal that I think are horrible. You know, I mean, I mean, there's like many, many black metal bands are, are totally cool and woke, but like in the like core mythology of it, um, you know, there's a lot of you know, nationalism and racism and, killing queer people and like and and that um that's something that i'm really ambivalent about and 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 like um uh or i mean hate <laughs> you know like, 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 like it's um it's not it's not okay you know that that, that and, and it seemed a lot cuter too like in you know before 2016 so 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 i mean i feel a bit ambivalent about my relationship to black metal um so I don't know. That's I mean that's kind of like every answer under the sun. But I think there's a, there's a bit of truth in all of them. Hmm. I, I I think a lot of what you said is uh, interesting because I, it, it's almost like some of the stuff that you're saying is linking into the next question that I had already written down. It's really funny. It's like okay. yeah. It's like we're on a similar <laughs> wavelength here. Or whatever. But... I, I I had a spy go in and look, look at your notes. So. Well, it's it's intriguing to me what you were saying about you know sort of looking at metal or almost music culture in this series of you know historical events like a renaissance and a, you know an industrial revolution a countercultural moment um, because uh, I mean it, at least from my own perspective I, while I do love metal music and I still hear metal music today that I enjoy um, I, I metal at large and I'll say this is also true of rock at large for for the most part but you know more often than not I'm I'm hearing bands that feel more in love with the genre's past than they are excited about the genre's future and you know there are certainly like uh, examples that you know the exceptions, you know, the stand out of that, that stand, you know, that are not liturgy, for example. Um, you know, I love uh, the work of Code Orange, for example. Um, but still, having said that, I mean, in the context of, you know, the current metal landscape, um, you know, do, do you feel like that obsession with the genre's past kind of holds true? And, and in that context, do you see yourself as kind of a futurist in a way in, in what you're doing artistically? I certainly see myself as a futurist. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't listen to very much metal. Hmm. Like, I, I'm not even sure what's going on in metal. Like, I, I mean, I think there is kind of like a querying of the genre going on that I'm kind of excited about. Like, like, like I, th I think it may become more interesting, but, but there also may be really interesting stuff going on that I don't know about. Um, like, like I'm, I'm, really, I'm really far away from it. Hmm. You know, like, like, like I, um, I, like I spend a lot of time with like noise musicians and uh, you know, kind of uh, yeah, just like experimental. I, I, I'm much closer to like experimental music scene than, than the metal scene. Hmm. Um, and that's fair if that's the case. Um, so let me move on to uh, asking you maybe about the, uh, uh, the spirituality component and the theological component to what you're doing and, you know, to sort of give the audience maybe a bit of a, a, a basic or a layman's understanding as to, um, how that plays into what you do. Because again, I know theology and theory are really passionate about it goes into a lot of your writing and a lot of, um, you know, your charts and infographs that you've come up with that, you know, sort of, um, I think are really interesting supplements to what you do. Um, but it all seems like, you know, very, um, I guess, a uh, professorial in a way, like it's coming from a very kind of heady and logical place, at, at least from how it seems from the outside. But w would you say sort of on a personal level, though, that you are somebody who, you know, has a deep belief in the spiritual? Are you a person of faith? Are you someone who believes in a higher power, you know, or, or a lot of or or is it more that, you know, what you're doing is merely kind of like a philosophical pursuit in a way? Oh, uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I value philosophy as an end in itself, even mm. if I were an atheist, I think. Mm. But I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I'm a theist. I, I believe in God. 
you know, I, I, I love Jesus. You know, I, I believe in the truth of the resurrection. Uh, um, it's, I'm, I'm very spiritual. Um, like, like I see, it definitely has a speculative aspect to it. Like I, I sort of see, I see William Blake as this sort of like great um, spiritual prophet who like, I don't know, it's like say like God made a new covenant with William Blake, right? And then uh, the the message of Christ uh, now began to be carried by like uh, the arts and emancipatory politics and and science and uh, I, I sort of I sort of believe in like a in, in, you know in a lot of ways I'm like a secular humanist um, but I do think that the divine angle on things is very valuable and uh and i'm kind of interested in kind of sharing that you know mm-hmm. like like i don't and and in some ways the ph- the philosophical aspects could totally be jettisoned too because i think that with like with like love i mean you don't even need to call it like god if you don't want but like with love like you kind of just you just have to like transmit it person to person and um and so there's only so much you can say but 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 I definitely see the music as being, um, yeah. I mean, an, animated by love, you know, and, uh, and 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 not just like part of what the manifesto or the text or whatever about is sort of like trying to like cultivate love on a formal level, like using musical techniques too, mm. um, and you know, so, so not just like having lyrics, you know, that sort of are loving. Um, but kind of to kind of like create, you know, a field of intensity that like makes you want to cry or something and like recognize like the sacredness of like, the people around you um, and that kind of thing. And, um, and I think that black metal has a real power uh, that it's like a material. I think of it as like a material for like trying to do that. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would certainly say that's the case. There's kind of like these, I guess, sonic rushes that create mental sensations in what you're doing that almost feels like a cerebral orgasm in a way. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to like describe it outside of that, but like, you know, especially on these tracks from Asethica where you have these repeated, like, you know, you, you frame it as a burst beat, you know, these repeated, like rolling series of drums where the guitars are just like intensifying over. And it's just sort of like these waves of, you know, intensity just hitting you over and over and over. And, you know, it's it's almost like meditative in a way. It's sort of like a, almost like you know a deep breathing exercise or something. You know, or just sort of like a, a I don't know, like a, a, a I don't know. I'll just I'll just leave it at meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely like. I mean, I feel like that's an experience that I gravitate towards, and so I, I want to create it for myself. Um, and, um, and yeah, so yeah, sheer, sheer repetition, you know, compositional complexity, like loudness, like there's like, there, like there's kind of more like, kind of, I guess there is more sort of like cerebral theory behind it. You know, it's like, it's sort of based on, you know, Deleuze's theory of intensive quantity and sort of like how, you know, how like, a like uh an like an emergent system like emergent properties can come out of a system if you sort of like uh you know increase the intensity to a certain degree and like 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 i do have like kind of theory around it um but sometimes i mean a lot of that is commentary on what's happening you know it's it's not it's not it's not necessarily uh um the theory doesn't necessarily come first Hmm. to take it really quickly back to the i guess more spiritual side of things um a lot like your appreciation of metal and black metal music i i think because of kind of the uh, theory and the way that you present a lot of what you're doing if somebody isn't sort of understanding of the terms or the context or the background like it might seem sort of like an you know almost like an aesthetic on the surface but um you know li- like i was saying earlier like with uh, the black metal thing i don't think you would put as much thought and effort into it if it didn't mean something personal to you and um and that being said like are are there more in other ways that i think um that i i guess are there are there other ways that maybe you could 
sort of go into that you feel like your your faith and your interpretation of I, I, the teachings of the Bible or you know wh wherever sort of your your faith leads you ideologically right now that how exactly do you feel like that dictates your personal life your moral code uh, that sort of thing I mean especially the moral code because I think when most people think religion they think morality yes um yeah, yeah. My, my, my little slogan on the album is "Every human is a religion," which I know? wanted to which ask you like, about. It. I wanted to ask you about that as well. So, which is it's just kind of contra it sounds contradictory, but it's sort of like because I, because I sort of believe in like personal religion. Mm. I don't really like spiritual but not religious because I sort of like the structured aspect of religion. But like the um. But that doesn't mean it needs to be an, an externally imposed religion, you know, because, because I mean, yeah, those, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a follower of any external religion, you know, like I think that, um, I guess the way it affects me personally is sort of, so like, you know, like, like my like philosophy system is it's it's just a system of transcendental philosophy and it like like it's you know it's a theory of the soul and the nature of good and evil you know of of pure being an account of history and then an account of like or like a kind of theory of what what history is leading towards uh you know a kind of like post-capitalist uh eschatological future or something and then a theory of sort of how to achieve that and it, and it's all you know, it's like, like, like Kant has a system like that. You know, Hegel has a system like that. Marx has a system like that. It's, you know, it's, a, it's like a system of transcendental philosophy that's, that undermines itself and is like, can be revised and, and that kind of thing. Um, so it's not dogmatic at all. Um, and then part of what I guess I believe is that it is um, kind of integrated total art practices that are truly free um so like like it's pretty good it's pretty good to get as far as like finding your unique voice and being able to like make use of it to like inspire others you know i th think that's a very that's a lot of work just to like get to that and that's like a kind of freedom um but like to maybe be free from like the institutions and ideologies of the age and like actually be able to like imagine like imagine like a truly better future that's like perhaps, you know, beyond what you would even think is possible ordinarily. That like, that like a combination of music, like to have, to have sort of like a religious, like a connection to God and to sort of be fulfilling like an artistic uh, project and to be thinking critically and to be involved in emancipatory politics mm -hmm. and to kind of like have those begin like positive feedback or something mm -hmm. um, is like maybe like, like an ideal like mode of life or something. And that's kind of what I, like, it's kind of for me, you know, it's, it's not like, like, I mean, I don't like, I'm not trying to sell anybody the philosophy that doesn't want to hear it, but it's, it's, it's sort of useful to me in the way I kind of, run the career of liturgy first of all and and like and like uh you know do the music in such a non-institutional way sort of um and and i feel like there there will be people out there who kind of like light up when they sort of get what i'm talking about and like those are the people who i'm interested in reaching uh who who, who might like to do, do it too you know so so it's like uh yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of a political theory, I guess, hmm. but but with this kind of like artist politics angle. Hmm. Um, and let's go into the maybe a little bit of the theory behind the the new record and everything. Um, to to I guess bring it to maybe one of the most basic points and explanations that can be made. Do you want to sort of like explain the acronym of the title of the record and you know what exactly that? Uh, uh, is 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 communicating to uh to the listener h a q q sure well 
the, 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 I mean, the acronym itself is, um, it's kind of hard to, to really explain without explaining a lot of, a whole lot of other stuff, but, <laughs> but, but, but the version, but see the acronym version is a different term from the version that's not an acronym. So, so, so there's also just HAQQ with no dots mm. and that's, I mean, I mean, that's essentially like. That's like what, that's like sort of a field of love that like the music is trying to make contact with. Hmm. It's sort of, it's sort of like the most like primordial aspect of God. Um, and then I don't really know if this is the place to like go into the full like theological part of the system, but then, but, but then there's sort of, then there's sort of a reflective aspect of God, which is called Olalan. Hmm. And that's what my opera is about, mm -hmm. which is sort of like, which is the basis for emancipation because, mm -hmm. because it's like what, you know, like anyway, and then, and, and then light is sort of the response to that. And there's this kind of like being reflection and actuality are sort of three like fundamental, like philosophical tropes that I think are sort of best understood in this way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, you're starting to put it in terms that I feel like I'm beginning to understand, you know, but, but I uh -huh. feel like I've been paying attention for so long. Like I, I'm sort of familiar with some of the terminology already. Like there are people mm -hmm. in chat saying this is going over my head to be honest. <laughs> and I was expecting some of that, but, 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 but that, that's okay. See, okay. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. Like, no, why, it's, it, 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 it is, it is okay. I, I don't want everyone to expect to get everything off the bat. I would say even, I feel like it's even more than okay, because I feel like that there's actually um, a real value in like a certain inscrutability mm -hmm. and like maybe contacting things that you don't like right away or understand right away. And it's actually very difficult to sort of get things like that to show up in the world anywhere, like right now, you know, um, like, like because everything is so mediated, you know, even even super countercultural stuff, super like off the grid stuff. Like it's all kind of like, you don't even find out about it unless it gets like upvoted enough. Mm -hmm. And so, and then there's this kind of like slick quality, I feel like to culture that's, that's, um, that has like certain like ideologies sort of embedded in it, um, that, that make it like hard to pay attention kind of, you know? And, and, and so like, like I really appreciate when I encounter like, art or music or whatever that like is inscrutable and and like especially when it's outside of like the fine art context because like you can you can kind of do it you could like go to the art world and act like this and people would like be like oh of course i'm going to pretend to understand you know like because that's a whole different sort of code of culture and i think that's just as bad but like being inscrutable outside of the art world or, you know, like, like, like the, these kinds of scramblings are like very, uh, uh, I don't know. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I personally get uh, quite a bit out of them too. And there's not many musicians out there who put that sort of like effort into, into what they're doing or value that kind of communication. And I'll say liturgy is one of the few projects out there that I, I guess the more I understand about the theoretical background that you've built around it, almost like the more mystified I am by it. You, typically, it's that the more you understand about something, you know, the plainer or more obvious or more basic it becomes, you know, and then, and, and I feel like with liturgy, yeah. it's, it's almost sort of become the opposite because it's sort of like the, the, you know, it's, it's almost like the, the, the lore of it almost builds in a way over time. And, you know, and, and having said that, I mean, you know, looking and referring back to the, the album art over here, you know, I, I see that you're still sort of like working with the, you know, transcendental, transcendental black metal chart presentation. Um, and, and the manifesto that you've written about transcendental black metal and what it is, where it's going, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's qualities in comparison with, uh, older, more traditional forms of black metal. Um, you know, it's, it still seems like that, that dichotomy is there, but in what ways would you say it, if at all, it has evolved since that time, because it has been a while since you, you put out those thoughts originally. I mean, has, has sort of the philosophy of this style, this idea, whatever you want to frame it as, has, has it sort of changed significantly over time, would, would you say, in terms of its purpose or what it's trying to achieve or what it represents? Yeah, it's changed in a couple of ways, I guess. Hmm. I mean, first of all, it's... Um, 
it's just developed a lot. So, I mean, that was like, you know, that was one text that was like seven pages long, which I, which I spent like four years on or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and it was kind of like, I don't know, announcing a philosophy system to come or something. Uh, and, but so it was really around maybe 2016 or 2017 that I started actually kind of understanding the full kind of architecture of the system and kind of, kind of letting it kind of coagulate. And like, um, so, I mean, in, in some ways it's just developed and like become just more complex or something. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also I, I do, I guess, I mean, I used to be more into like continental philosophy um, and I think I had more faith in a bit more of a, um, it's like pure, uh, pure intensity or something hmm. that, that wasn't as, um, I don't know, wasn't as like explicitly focused on love almost, hmm. um, I, I think I've I've definitely put a lot more um, like rationalism into the system over time hmm. um, beca because 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 I think that like that that root I don't know like I mean you know like after like after that came out like the whole sort of like accelerationist movement and scene kind of came out that, and like that I just kind of like don't. I just begin to kind of see some cracks, I think, in sort of like th the goodness of kind of sheer intensity. And, um, and so I have, yeah, changed in some ways. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, also like there was just the burst beat before and now there's the burst beat and general tremolo, mm. uh, which like is kind of, I don't know. I mean, I could go into detail on what those things are, but, uh, Honestly, honestly, I will say please do because I think there are a lot of people who are listening to the music and don't exactly understand like the mechanics of a burst beat versus a blast beat. Because I mean, I'll I'll, I'll say personally when I first read the manifesto, which was after I had heard you know uh, the music. Um, you know, I was like, this is black metal, but the, like, what the? It doesn't sound like it doesn't progress. It doesn't move like any black. There's sort of a staticness to that more traditional form that um, that I guess I hadn't realized was there until I heard what you were doing. You know, it's 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 sort of interesting. It's like you don't really know what darkness is until until you see the light. In uh -huh. So. You know, and after I had heard, you know, what you were doing with with the burst beat, as it were, as opposed to a blast beat, um, th then there was sort of like this momentum component that um, that 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 I just didn't realize could be there. You know, just sort of like the possibilities kind of opened up. And again, if you want to explain at least those two mechanics, so that people kind of get and understand why that makes the music have certain sensations to it, that I think that would be beneficial. Uh, okay, let me, let me think. How like how I could could it quickly do it. like the, the the metaphor or the example kind of that I always have in mind is like water, mm. right? So like water has like water can be ice, and then if it heats up, it like changes to a new form and it becomes liquid, mm. and then and then it has another point like a threshold at which it then becomes steam or gas, right? Mm. And like that's something that's like inherent to matter. These like thresholds, where like you you think that like a form is absolute, like this is ice and it's just going to be ice. But then like because of like a higher degree of intensity, it like transforms into something else. And so like you can kind of make an ethics out of that. And like maybe that's like an alternative to bourgeois morality or something. You know, uh, like sort of conformist. Uh, more like old school religious uh, morality where you're actually sort of making contact with these forces that are life enhancing that can like bring a situation uh, to a place where it just like erupts into something else. Yeah. And, um, and, and there's a certain like freedom in that. So like, 
I don't know if I explained that very well, but like, no, you, it, I, I, I think you, sp- you explain, you're, you're explaining it. Great. Please continue <laughs> on this train. Thank you. Yeah. So, so that's kind of like libidinal materialism or something. Mm-hmm. It's like that, like, um, and so what the birth speed is, is a kind of worship of that idea. And, uh, it's like a mimesis of the process that I just described and those, those kind of thresholds. So like, like if you'll notice in the in the burst beat, I guess I don't know how clear it is to people, but like there are it's like there are several speeds of blast beat. Mm-hmm. Um, there there's sort of like we call it like the grind beat, blast beat, and like hits, and and I kind of compose those three to um, I compose like the the rhythm the rhythm parts to sort of evolve from one to another and like suddenly switch um, in a way that would perhaps resonate with that cosmic truth that I just described mm-hmm. and perhaps like create a collective experience where that is happening because it has been like mirrored by this, this practice. So it's like, you know, so whereas like the, the mere like Hyperborean blast beat is like in, in this more rigid mode of time of like metric space where like, it's just always going like a clock kind of, um, and that, and that maybe, you know, maybe different musical styles create certain different like modes of attention. And so like you sort of have a certain state of mind because of one rhythm and then a different rhythm creates a different state of mind. And so, so it's like using the materials of the blast beat and kind of mutating them. Um, and then that's, yeah. And then, and then it kind of like naturally produces a kind of joy and it's also like mutation in itself is a kind of ethics, you know, like sort of like becoming is emancipation in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I mean, I know. Per, you know, personally, to kind of put my my own thoughts on it out there off of what you said, because a lot of what you said just now, which is why I think it was a good explanation, made me think about it in a different way. Um, you know, the way the rhythm the rhythms in your pieces sort of progress and, you know, we'll start it up up, 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 and then sort of speed up with that intensity. Um, it kind of reminds me of, have, have, you, have you ever seen or heard any of those sonic experiments where maybe like a rhythm will be played and then it will be sped up to the point where it creates a tone? It's exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly it's, it's, like that. It's exactly yeah. like that. It's like that and almost like the, the point of peak intensity, it's almost like it doesn't even become a rhythm anymore. It becomes this smooth sort of like beam of sound it, it, you know? it's transubstantiation it changes from rhythm to pitch it, 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 that's another example it, it it's universal like that you can find it water does it sound waves do it um also like locomotion like 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 when a horse you know a horse is walking but then when it reaches a certain speed it has to start trotting and then it has to start cantering that's like that's like a less like fascinating version to like think about but it's, it's like the same uh, this is all like mathematizable you know, um, it, it's not, it's not just like an observe, like a poetic observation. Um, <laughs> hold, hold on, time out. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not seeing, <laughs> you're not seeing this sort of looking at chat right now and everyone's like, oh my God, I get it. Oh my God. It all makes oh, sense. Really? There, there are people in chat saying, holy shit, it makes sense now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I love it. I'm, I'm so glad. I, yeah, I, I'm really glad I can't see the chat because I, I, I'm so I'm so traumatized that you know, I'm just like, all right. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I mean I, actually, the original version of the burst beat. Okay, so like the first liturgy song I ever made was a cover of "No More Sorry" by My Bloody Valentine. Mm-hmm. Um, or it was like I had made like depressive albums. And then that was, I had this like moment kind of where it was like, I was just like, you know, listening to like Belinda Butcher singing and like listening to kind of like the, the type of like atmospheres. And that's it's like one of the quieter songs kind of. And then I was like, well, I'm going to like play this song on guitar and then um, like record that and then have like a, bl- like a blast beat program and then just like, toggle the tempo wheel so it just kind of goes up and goes down Hmm. and then and that's what it was like switching kind of i guess i had more extreme versions than the one that actually went on the album because it was almost like too weird but like it was like oh wow this is like uh approaching that like threshold and so so, so it was like it, it took a while to kind of get from doing it in that electronic version 
to like a more physical one. Um, but, 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 but the initial like inspiration was exactly that, like, 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 like literally that very same thing. Hmm. And, and before we move on to, a, you know, the, maybe the last few questions I wanted to ask you, did you, um, did, did you want to go into the general tremolo and sort of like explain some of the mechanics be, behind that, since that's kind of a component of, of the sound of the project? Uh, sure. Oh yeah. I mean, okay. So like, like, so special tremolo, uh, which is the term I made up, like everyone else just calls it tremolo, but like, like special tremolo is just like the, the guitar technique of black metal, which the consistent is, picking on a single, you know, sort of note or fast phrase. picking with, with high gain so that it sounds like a continuous tone. Hmm. And so it's, it's, a. Uh, so it kind of makes contact with like the union between the discrete and the continuous, which is another aspect of God. But in black metal, it's like makes contact with like the old pagan gods, uh, which I'm not interested in. I'm interested in William Blake's God, as I explained. And so, uh, so you start with the guitar version, but then you also um, bring it into other elements of the arrangement, which is, that's part of why I have all the glockenspiels. I have a lot of like glockenspiels tremoloing. Hmm. They're sort of meant to like bring tremolo out of its like natural habitat. Hmm. And then and then the glitches on the album are a further disjunction where it's like because um, it's like sonically kind of similar to tremolo, but you're actually like manipulating the recording. And so it's this. Um, and then I also even kind of. I actually see like 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 back like back in like 2015 like combining rap and black metal or whatever like I, I i see certain um cultural interventions that are gonna like maybe not be liked right away or like totally as kind of part of it Th this kind of like glitching that sort of um dissolves the boundaries between discrete parts of the world like lets in the light of like the one true God that is like this continuity itself. Um, and so, so it's kind of like a, a different path into this like divine mutation. Hmm. Okay. Um, so let me move on to a, a few more questions before I start taking um, maybe a few viewer questions before we head out, which you can submit your own. If you have questions for Hunter via the little Q and a tab that is underneath uh, where we're streaming right now on Twitch. Um, the last couple of things that I wanted to throw at you were about, really the backlash and negativity that liturgy had sort of received at the earlier part of, of last decade. I mean, I, I can say personally, as someone who has been a longtime fan of the project, like knowing some of the hatred, knowing some of the negativity, um, some of which became personally dangerous to you from what I understand. Um, I, I, I personally feel fortunate that you stuck with this project in the way that you have and that you've stuck with your vision in the way that you have, despite all of that negativity from, you know, any number of people that came in numerous shapes and sort of forms. And, you know, now that um, the project is rightfully receiving at least some positivity off of this new record, you know, do, do you have any sort of retrospective thoughts on like what it's kind of been like to come out on the other end of that? Um. I mean, we talked some about this with like, you know, is it, is it just originality or you know, whatever, but like, I guess another thing that I would add to that is like, I do kind of feel like in some ways, like it was my own fault um, because like, like, because I like, like I wasn't living my authentic truth during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, there, like, there was something really like, like wrong with me, you know? And like, like, uh, gender dysphoria is like a huge part of like, I don't know what, what made me do, do, make this music in a way, you know, like there's, there's something, there's something, um, there's something very trans about the music, you know, and like, and in a way it was seeing how many like trans women it was affecting and like connecting to that, that helps me see certain aspects of that. But like, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't like, I, 
like I was very like pent up during that time, you know, and like I think that like I was pretty comfortable playing shows and like on stage, but like I I also felt like I was just carrying kind of a like like the exact like negative energy that I was trying to escape, and I sort of didn't know that or didn't you know like 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 my interviews were like very awkward you know and sort of people would like make fun of me for that for just kind of being like tightly wound almost like 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 it's almost like maybe that's what it was like uh, like i don't know i'm I'm sure there was like some kind of like i was like a very like femmy person so 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 i got a lot of like you know i've 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 got more I've i've gotten more transphobic insults before I was came out as trans than I have since I came out as trans, you know, like, like, um, so I don't, it, it, it's in a way kind of hard to comment. Like, like, I think, I think in some ways it's cool that it was so hated and now like some people think it's, you know, really love it. And I also think that it's like tragic. I, I think that like, especially I think, like, especially after Aesthetica came out, uh, which was, like, like 2012 or whatever, like, I kind of could have come out around then. Like, I sort of began to understand more what being trans is. And, like, and like I didn't, you know. And, 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 like, I when I think of that era, I kind of have this, I don't know, clenched feeling about it, you know. So, um, I don't know. I, I, th- I think that was kind of part of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, beyond that, too, uh, really quickly before we jump into a, a few viewer questions, um, you know, would, would you like to quickly, uh, you know, address the fact that you have come out as trans just as recently as this year? I mean, it, it's I don't believe that was the case publicly when, when you would just put this album out. I mean, you know, in, re- in respect to what you were just talking about, generally, do you feel like almost like a, a weight's been lifted off your shoulders or something uh, along those lines? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, right. Yeah, very much. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I was kind of working towards it for a couple of years, really, and kind of, you know, being being more, like, privately non-binary or, like, you know, in, like, queer safe spaces or stuff like that. But, like, um, I mean, it's been, yeah, it, it, it's been much, you know, I, I kind of, like, made a video about this, but, like, I, like, like I didn't, I didn't understand how good it would really feel to like, you know, like start, start presenting feminine and like, like going on hormones and like, uh, like living this way. It's, it, it's like, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. it, it it's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, 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 and like, and it's, and there's been so much support from people, you know, like, like I really kind of, and it was nice that the, and the album came out before all that. I think because I, 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 I was already kind of feeling much happier you know, because of that or whatever. But like, um, there's a lot of like there's a lot of like I feel very held by by people, um, and 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 that's it's kind of like part of what music scenes are all about uh, in, in a lot of ways, and and something that like I kind of had trouble because I had trouble connecting with that when I was younger, it's kind of cool to, to sort of be experiencing that now. Hmm. Um, All right. Um, I, I guess to lighten things a little bit, you know, just with a few viewer <laughs> questions before we head out, you know, just before uh, we get into these, um, I'll say thank you for coming on. You know, you've been a great guest and I think uh, it's been fantastic to hear you kind of go into the deeper theory and sort of, you know, explanations behind a lot of what you're doing and get more background on it, which I, um, you know, know is rare as of late. Um, in terms of, you know, your willingness to do interviews and, and interviewers willingness to ask, you know, sort of questions about this stuff too. So, uh, you know, I, and I just see a lot of people in chat greatly, uh, appreciate, you know, the fact that you've uh, taken the time to do this. Yeah. And th- thanks for the invitation. Thank, th- thanks for being supportive. Yeah. Um, you know, an interesting personal question here comes from James record. Uh, how would you say you balance music with the other commitments and obligations in your life? Um, I don't know. I guess not that well. I I mean, like, I mean, since coronavirus happened, I don't know. I mean, we were supposed to go on tour Hmm. all year or or like, like all throughout the year. And, uh, we've just kind of like packed in 
uh, more songwriting, I guess, during this time. Mm. But I mean, I, I'm definitely like quite obsessive about writing music for sure. Um, Arthur Cardoso asks, uh, can you name three or four philosophers that are right now during these past few months in your readings and thoughts? Three or four philosophers in the past couple months? Yeah, just what you're reading and sort of like thinking about most intensely as of late. Oh. I mean, I just read um, with, with some friends or some people in my Discord uh, uh, a book called, uh, um, what's it called exactly? It's something like Treatise on the Nature of Human Freedom by Schelling, mm. who's like a German idealist philosopher, like a contemporary of Hegel. Um, I, like last year I was really into Intelligence and Spirit by Reza Negrostani, who's sort of like, sort of like a left-wing accelerationist thinker kind of, uh, who deals with German idealism in a similar way. Um, and uh, let's see, maybe one, my favorite book, oh, it's usually sitting right here. There's a book called Meditations on the Tarot, uh, which was anonymously written by like a Russian mystic that like um, is like my favorite, like, like it's not, like, it sounds like it would be just like a book about like how to do tarot, but it's like a, it's this deep, like profound meditation on the intersection between hermeticism, Kabbalah and like Christianity and Vedanta. And it's like, it's cool. I, I, feel, I feel like it's like the greatest spiritual text of the 20th century. It was written during the sixties. And it's, it, it's kind of like my, my Bible. I like, I like look at it like almost every day. <laughs> um, Alex Kuhn 93 asks, uh, uh, well, this person says, hi Hunter. First off, I have to say you look amazing. Second, uh, do you listen to any queer, queer adjacent black metal projects like victory over the sun or evangelist? If so, what's your favorite? I know earlier you were, you know, talking a little bit about, um, kind of this queering of metal music, but, but that, that's not something that personally I've observed, not to say that it's not happening, but if you have some inside baseball on some, these artists or other artists that you feel like are doing some interesting things right now, sort of in that field, I think I, and other people who are watching would, would value that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I know, I know both of those projects like, mm. uh, uh, through, through Twitter or, or like Vivian from Victor of the Sun, I, I met on tour last year. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, both of those projects are awesome. Um, there's another one called non, uh, based out of Boston that does kind of like screamo, like kind of screamo, like black, like black metal vibes. Um, is that like a phonetic N A A N or N A N or uh, dash N O N. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they have a cool name too. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see other, other queer black metal besides those three, projects i mean victoria the sun is more like death metal in a way but it's mm -hmm. very like composedly um i don't know i, I i've listened to a lot of uboa uh, okay yeah. I, I, like i mean that's not i mean it's, it's metal adjacent you know um, yeah definitely i mean the new ep is good the last album's been good the last album is incredible i yeah. that, that that was one, that was one of my favorite records from last year and and she has really uh insightful theories about like she's kind of a philosopher too. Like, like mm. she has very insightful theories about um, like transness specifically, uh, which uh, I'm tr tr trying to learn about actually, because it's something that I'm thinking about in a more theoretical way recently because of kind of coming out. Okay. Um, I think I'll throw uh, one more at you here. I, I think, I mean, we addressed this, but we didn't exactly collide these two topics directly, I suppose. But Toffee M uh, says, as a gay person, I have a hard time connecting with God and religion. So my question is, how do you view the intersection between your own queer identity and, and religion and God? Yeah, I mean, that, that's like, I, I like, I, I think, like, my God loves queers, you know, like, uh, that that's pretty much the answer. Like, 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 I think that I think that like the civil rights movement is God, you know, and, 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 and that like, and I wish it had more, uh, I wish it had more like uh, connection to its like original 
religious heritage because I think a lot of the civil rights movement sort of came out of religion. Um, For sure. And then, and then has kind of like jettisoned, jettisoned a lot of the like bigoted aspects, but like, I wish it would kind of hang on to like the God aspect because, because I just think that you have more, you just have more agency when you love God or something. It, you're just cal- You're just calmer. You can make better decisions. And I think it's, it's easier to like organize politically uh, under God's light. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you very much again for coming through and just telling us everything, being an open book, spilling your heart out and, and, you know, <laughs> blowing everyone's mind with the burst beat. It's a, it's a very enjoyable conversation. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't able to, you know, uh, uh, go toe to toe with you maybe as much with the theory stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm, st- I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still getting a grasp of it. I'm, st- I'm still learning how to pronounce half this stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'll get there eventually. I, I, yeah, I thought that was a great conversation about the theory. I thought, I thought, I thought those were good questions. I thought, okay. uh, I, uh, yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you very much and have a great night and, and we appreciate you. I appreciate you personally and all of you watching.